Hi everyone, welcome back to music. Let's sing our welcome song, Epo Itai Tai, and you can choose any level of actions you want. Ready, here we go. Epo Itai Tai, Epo Itai Tai. Epo Itai Tai, Epo Itai Tai, Epo Itai Tai. This time, you can choose um, to change the actions that you do. So you could go from like beginner to challenge or challenge to expert. You could choose to do the same set of actions that you do. Everybody must sing. Let's sing together. Ready? Here we go. This time, you get to either choose one more group of actions you want to do. It could be a group of actions you have not done, or you could just choose to stay on the same actions because they're your favourite. Whatever you choose, choose wisely. Make sure you can sing while you're doing your actions. Ready? Make your choice. Ready? Steady? Everyone sing. Let's see what you have in store in music today. Now last week in music you might remember that we had a little look at writing songs from stave to stick notation. So the two songs we were looking at were Here comes a bluebird in through my window and the other one was um, Bend to the right side, circle to the left. We went into our books and we wrote the sofa in the heartbeats um, of uh, Here comes a bluebird using the Dave notation to help us transfer it into stick notation. So part of that exercise um, is diving into a new area called steps, skips and leaps. Now we're very clever and we know what steps are. Tick. We know that steps go from lines to space or space to lines. We know what skips are as well because there's that special little clue they give us because they are cut, cut, copycats. But the idea of a leap is a little bit of a new one. So we're going to take a look at all three to remind us what they are, but then also how a leap looks really different to a step or a skip. So if I have a sound on my save, and this sound I've popped into space number three, one, two, three. If I put a sound in space two, let's have a think. They've gone from a space to a space. Oh, hang on a second. What does that mean they are? They are copycats. And we know that skips are copycats. Say that with me. Skips are copycats. Good. So we know this is a skip. Done. If I put my same sound in space three just over here and I only went down to line number three, Oh, going from a space to a line, does that make it a copycat? Mm -mm. So if it's not a copycat and it's gone right to the neighbouring place, that must mean it's a step. So we have our skip and we have our step and we're very good at knowing what they are. But our new one is a leap. I have my sound in space three again. And I'm going to put 
a sound all the way down here in space one. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I've gone from a space to a space, that's a copycat. Mm -mm. Wrong. It's not a copycat because look at this. My copycats go to neighbour spaces. So it's only the space next door or the line next door if we're working on the lines. So it's only the space next door. Has this one gone to the space next door? Mm -mm -mm. It's leaped over the fence and gone to the um, next space down. So instead of going to the neighbouring space, three to two for example, they've leaped over the fence and they've gone to the other place, the place across the road almost. So we've gone from space three to space one. That is our leap. Let's take a look at some examples that are on the lines now. So if I put my sound on line number three here and I draw my next sound in space number three, have a think about what that might be. We're going from line three to space three. Is that a copycat? Mm -mm -mm. Did it leap anywhere? Mm -mm. It's gone right next door from a line to a space. So that has to be a step. If I have my same sound on line number three and I put my next sound on line number two, how far apart are they? Did it click? Line three to line two, copycats, and then neighbour copycats. So it has to be a skip because they're skipping on my stave. And if I have my sound here and I put my other sound up here on top of the stay, so it's balancing on top, what would we call that? It hasn't jumped to, and it hasn't gone to a neighbouring place. It hasn't stepped up into the next space or line. So it has to be a leap. When we talk about how far apart our sounds can be, musicians have a special word for that. Musicians call the distance between our notes an interval. Can you say that with me? Interval. So we are looking at the interval of pitches of notes on the stave, and their intervals can be a step apart, a skip apart, or even a leap apart. So in the next uh, couple of classes, we're going to start to look at intervals on the music stave. Right now, we're going to do our what for today, which is we are learning to write a new song called Suogan, which we started yesterday. We are learning to write Suogan in letter names and sofa names. So we're taking a look at Suogan again today. We're going to revise it from um, the last lesson that we had. You need to check the melody as you sing Suogan with me. So you need to point to the pictures as you sing. Medico, suogan, do not And now let's sing it in solfa. Here are our sounds on the music stave. When you sing your solfa words, make sure you show your solfa hands clearly. Ready. Do, 
If you think you want to revise the song even more than we have already in class, you're allowed to pause here and rewind to sing through it again. If you think, no, I'm all good, I know it, we're going to move through into our book. So you're going to need your red books out, turn to page 13, have a pencil ready, and I'll meet you in a second. So we have Suogan in our music books. Open your red book to page 13 and make sure you have a pencil ready to write as well. We have our tone set and note set up here in the top right hand corner. Our song is a Do Re Mi song. Can you sing your tone set with me with your hands as well? Ready. Do, re, mi. You can see that we have the letter names written today as well. Do is equals F. Do steps up to Re, which means F steps up to G. Re steps up to me, so it means G steps up to A. Can you sing our note set but using the letter names this time, F, G and A? Let's try it. Ready, F, G, A. Do your note set backwards with your letter names. Ready, A, G, F. So let's go down here to our song, Su Organ. We have two jobs. Job number one is right in our sofa, and you can see we're going to write in our sofa and the heartbeats up here. Job number two is you need to write in your letter names down the bottom here. So let's start with job number one. Job number one is writing our sofa. We know that Do is living in space number one. We know that Ray is living on line two, and we know that A is living in space two. So let's hop down here back to our um, heartbeats and let's have a look at our sounds from the start. We've got a sound in space one, we know that that's Do. We've got our sound on line two, we know that's Ray, and our sound in space two, we know that that's me. Now we've got a sound on line number two. Line number two, let's have a look up here. It must be a ray. So let's put a neat little letter R in the heartbeat. You can write this along with me as we do it. Then we step down to space one. Our sound in space one, let's use our note set up here, is F, which equals Do. So Do goes up here in this little heartbeat there. We step from space one up to line two. What was that sound on line two up here? It was ray. So here's my ray, but think about it. This is my ta ah, which is a one sound over two beats. So let's show that it's one sound over two beats by drawing the arrow to the next heartbeat. That is how you use your note set to help you write your sofa. I want you to pause the video here and I want you to finish writing the sofa into your heartbeats. Pause the video here to finish writing your sofa into your heartbeats. Once you've finished I want you to press play and I'm going to show you the next bit. Now that you've had a go writing in your sofa, I want you to take a moment to self-correct your sofa from the sofa that I have written in. Pause here and take a moment to self-correct. Put a tick next to the ones that you have correct and you can rub out the ones that aren't correct and write in the correct one. Pause here and self-correct. So now that you've self-corrected your sofa, let's have a look at writing in our um, letter names. So 
This is where our note set really comes in handy. We know that every time we see do, that equals f. Every time we see re, that equals g. And every time we see me, that equals a. This is like a key to help you work this out. So let's go back down here. We've got f equaling do, g equaling re, and a equaling me. Fantastic. Now we come here to re. What does re equal? It equals G just here. So then we go down to out this part and we write in G right there. And let's have a look. Our next note along is Do. So let's go up to our key. Do equals F just here. So let's go back down and we'll write in the letter name F just like that and that's how you use so that's how you use a note set to write the letter names in of the notes that we have on the stage so i want you to pause the video here and give it a go using the note set up here to help you as a key to help you translate the letter names of the notes down here on the music stage Pause here, give that a go now, and once you're done, press play again, and we'll self-correct the answers together. And by now, you should have had a go at writing the letter names in. Can you take a moment to have a look at the letter names that I've put in here and self-correct them, put a little tick next to the ones that you've gotten right, and then you can rub out the ones that were in error and write in the correct letter name. Pause here and self-correct now. Now that you've self-corrected your letter names, let's finish off by singing Suogan in letter names because we've already sung it in so far a million billion times. Let's sing it in our letter names. Are you ready? Point as you sing. F, G, A, G, F, G. F, G, A, G, A, F. Good job, everybody. Now I want you to make sure that your red books are closed and I want you to pop them in a safe place in your learning space because it's time to have a bit of a sing and a bit of a move and a bit of a think and a bit of a laugh. Wait a moment. Just before we go and have a little bit of a sing, I forgot to show you and tell you what this little chart up here means. This little chart is fingering, so where you put your fingers on a particular instrument, and the instrument is a recorder. Now, some of you may have seen a recorder before. Some of you might even have one at home. Who knows? But the fingering up here on the chart right here for F, for G and for A are for the recorder just here. And what these dots mean is where you put your fingers to cover the holes on the instrument. So we have one hole at the back of the instrument and lots of holes on the front of the instrument. This is the bit where you blow your air and this is the bit where the air comes out and this is the bit that makes the sound. So if I wanted to play F on the recorder, this little, um, this little dot up here that's not in line with the others, that means you have to press down the back hole. And I'm gonna use my thumb to press down at the back. Then I need to go down one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go down one, cover one, cover two, cover three, and use my other hand to cover four. By the way, my left hand is on top, my right hand is on the bottom. This little circle that's not coloured in, that means you need to leave it open. So after I've covered four, I need to skip one and then cover two more. So I've covered one, two, three, four. I'm going to skip one and cover two. So that's my F note. If I blow on my recorder, it's going to sound like an F. That's my F. And to make my G, let's have a look. We cover the thumb bit, so the thumb's covered at the back. Then we cover one, two, and three. So let's try it. One, two, and three. Here's my G sound. And then for A, the thumb is still covered, the back hole is still covering. 
with the thumb and then I only cover one and two at the front so let's go back is on one and two at the front and here's my A sound so I know how to play suo going because I know that I need to put my fingers here for F this is my G and this is my A here's how suo gan sounds on the recorder recorder or something like that lying around at home, see if you can play sewer guard on it. So we started working on a song that goes like this. My hat, it has three corners and so on and so forth. So let's sing the song together to start. Ready, here we go. My hat, it has three corners. Three corners has my hat, and if it not three corners, it would not be my hat. We're going to use this as an inner hearing exercise today, so you're not allowed to sing the word hat, but you must do the action for it. Ready, here we go, my, it has three corners. Three corners has mine, and if it's not three corners, it would not be mine. Nice, now we're going to take out the word corners. Let's try it. No hat, no corners. Ready, here we go. My hat, it has three. Three has mine. And if it's not three, it would not be mine. You know what's coming next. Let's take out another word. I think we should take out mine. Ready, here we go. It has three. Three has. And if it's not three, it would not be. That one was pretty tricky. I'm pretty sure I made a mistake there as well. Okay, well, let's keep pushing on. Let's take out the word three as well. Ready, here we go. It has. Has. And if it's not. It would not be. Awesome job. I wonder how you went. Were you able to take all the words out successfully? Or did you end up in a bit of a kerfuffle, kind of like I did in one of those rounds? Let's finish by singing the whole song together. Ready, here we go. My hat, it has three corners. Three corners has my hat. And if it's not three corners, it would not be my hat. Songs like this are great for brain breaks in your learning. If you ever have a part of the day where you think, oh, it's just a bit hard at the moment, try singing. Singing is a great way to re-energise you. And feel welcome to share this with your family and any friends that you might be calling at the moment. It would be great to have a little sing-along together and a little giggle at how silly some of these songs are and how silly some of the activities are too. So don't forget you can use them lots and lots and lots outside of music time as well. Well, that's it for music today. Thank you for your good singing, your good participation and your good listening. Let's sing goodbye to each other. The music time is over, it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye until the next time, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. The music time is over.
everybody. Have a great week and I'll see you next time for music.